Welcome back to the PPG, otherwise known as the Gulag. Today we're back with another Star Wars theory. But before we get into the theory, I want to mention a couple things. I hope you guys had a fantastic holiday. Number one, thank you for the love and support. Number two, and also if you are on the channel or been around the channel, I will be starting to post things on the community tab that has just been given to me by the YouTube gods, which I'm very excited about. And hopefully we'll get back into doing two theories a week. Uh, I was just kind of busy uh, with the holidays, obviously, so I didn't really have time to really edit, write, and do the whole process to make a really, really good theory. So I hope you guys enjoy this one. This one's about General Grievous. I think it's pretty cool. Um, shout out to whoever suggested the idea. I'm sorry I didn't get your name down, um, but I'm excited to do this. Uh, Alright, so let's get straight into it. What if General Grievous was Force-sensitive? General Grievous was the general of the largest army in galactic history. General uh, Grievous put fear into Jedi across the galaxy and diverted the Jedi's attention away from Sidious, which is, you know, having such an enormous threat to the Jedi had put them off balance, so they had to focus on Grievous rather than, you know, use their time and energy to work on finding the Sith Lord, which was Sidious. General Grievous led a separatist war efforts and killed several Jedi. This theory suggests that what if the Kalish warlord, Kwamean, Jai Shilal was Force-sensitive, that's a mouthful in it. Grievous was from Keli, which existed in wild space. Shilal, General Grievous's name, was a fierce warlord who fought in many wars for his people. With General Grievous being in wild space when he was born, it's fair to suggest that the Jedi would have missed him, much like they missed Palpatine being born on Naboo, which Naboo wasn't exactly in wild space, it was closer towards the Outer Rim, but it was, I don't know, I, I don't see Naboo in a wild space kind of area, it's kind of like in between, you know? So, with that assumption that they just wouldn't see General Grievous, he would grow to learn his Force powers, but he would use them recklessly, of course, because he wasn't trained to use them, and he became talented with the use of them, as, as a powerful being as of himself, and he, he grew as he wouldn't cannon into a warlord, but he would also use those force powers recklessly. And we could say either way, he didn't learn it or he learned it. I'm kind of going with he kind of found out that he had it, but it didn't, it wasn't a whole thing about his character that was force sensitive. It was more so something that he could do, but he was a warrior. He was a very talented warrior and the force helped him be that way. He didn't really know how or why, but you know, every so often he would be able to do an extra trick and be like, oh, that's pretty cool. Anyways, much like in canon, Shalau would sustain extreme amounts of damage in battle and would be required cybernetic enhancements to be able to function properly. And as in canon, he would pledge himself to Dooku, who Dooku would immediately realize that General Grievous, the newly named General Grievous that is, was force sensitive and that he was extremely talented. So, that being said, Dooku would train General Grievous in both force and saber combat. Grievous would become general and would prove more than a match for many Jedi. And in this situation, I see that General Grievous is a lot more Darth Vader esque. And canon and how George Lucas has always portrayed General Grievous as a goofier version of. Vader. He wanted him to embody the presence of Vader, but not really be Vader, right? It's even said that in the comics that a lot of people in the public saw Vader as a 2.0 of General Grievous. So I think having him with force powers, I see him acting a lot like Vader. He's built like Vader. He he's more machine than man like Vader. It's it's a lot of it's a lot of he's He's going to act like Vader. He won't be nearly as powerful, and, and we have to also mention the fact that Vader was extremely talented with the Force. I'm not saying that Grievous is going to be, like, super mega talented, I'm just saying that he's going to have the Force power, and, you know, he'll be able to use it, but he's going to have the presence as a Vader. He's not going to be nearly as talented, not nearly as strong as Vader, but he'll have the presence, if that makes sense, you know what I mean? So. Grievous would want to kill on Geonosis. If you didn't know, General Grievous was at Geonosis. He actually saw Obi-Wan Kenobi at Geonosis, which is why he had a fondness for Kenobi, because he saw Kenobi's fighting, uh, but it also means he wanted to kill Kenobi more. So, he would be told to remain hidden. General Grievous would then gain a reputation and grow in power from killing all the Jedi. Sidious would fear General Grievous more 
and made sure that Anakin Skywalker would never face Grievous. Now, another snippet for you if you're unaware, General Grievous was sort of a, a fear monger for Palpatine. Why? Well, because General Grievous was reckless. He was like a, he was like an animal. He was like a rabid animal. He was uncontrollable. He just wanted to kill. He was insane. He wanted to kill and he wanted power. And above anything, he wanted to kill Jedi. So Sidious was afraid that Anakin would actually end up fighting him and losing to him. And though Palpatine had no doubts for his future apprentice, he didn't want to lose him. So General Grievous in this situation would be a little bit even more terrifying to Sidious because again, he doesn't want to lose Anakin. General Grievous would essentially be a Sith and uh, Sidious could see General Grievous as a rival. But with the Jedi so focused on Grievous, he'd allow Grievous to continue killing the Jedi. So what I mean by that, what I mean by that really ominous statement is that I could see, much like Sidious seeing Asajj Ventress as a rival, he could see Grievous as a rival, because if you don't remember in the Clone Wars, uh, Darth Sidious told Dooku to execute Asajj Ventress because he was like, I sense that you have a fondness for her, I think that you, you want to betray me with her, so kill her to show how loyal you are. And I think he could have a kind of feeling like that with Grievous, and I think that would be an interesting way to separate. Um, but in this situation, we're going to avoid that. If you guys want to do another, like, a part two, or skew off into a different direction, we can do that. Or we can just talk about it in the comment section, so comment down below. Anyways, Kenobi and General Grievous would become rivals, as in canon. But masters like Eeth Koth and Kid Fisto may have been killed. Alright, I'm not suggesting that they, did be ki that they were killed, I'm leaving that up to you to decide. But they could have been killed, right? Kenobi through his multiple encounters with General Grievous would note that Grievous was becoming more and more powerful with each uh, contested combat because he was force sensitive and he was growing and Obi-Wan himself was growing as well. He was more than just a really good duelist, he was force sensitive and growing and that was putting Obi-Wan into crappy positions when he was getting into duels with General Grievous in this scenario. Towards the end of the Clone Wars, we're going to jump towards the Invisible Hand, where I really think this could split up into three different scenarios, where General Grievous could start getting really impatient. Now I'm going to go with the third one, but I'll tell you the first two so you guys can hear out what I was thinking when I was writing this. Now I think that General Grievous on the Invisible Hand could do a couple things. He could fight with Dooku and try and kill Anakin Skywalker and Obi-Wan, which could lead to a very interesting situation, especially if they kill Obi-Wan Kenobi and Palpatine is left there to watch Anakin have to fight for his life against Dooku and Grievous. He could execute the Jedi when they're in prison, so when Obi-Wan and Anakin are taken up after they've been race shielded, he could just kill them, and that would be that, and Sidious would just be like, oh fuck, I don't have anybody except for Grievous now, and everything could be the same, but it would change later, and I'm gonna go with that. Why? Because I, I just, that's what I wrote. For this one, we're gonna go with the canon option. That means we're gonna go with what happens later in Revenge of the Sith. The Council will dispatch Obi-Wan Kenobi and Anakin Skywalker to Utapau to face General Grievous and bring him to justice. So that's where the big change in our theory happens. Obi-Wan Kenobi and Anakin land on Utapau and find Grievous addressing the Separatists before they're dismissed. Anakin, drop down, Anakin drops down and ignites his blade. I'm going to pay for all the Jedi you've killed. Grievous snarls and ignites his four sabers, and Kenobi drops down behind him with a savvy, Hello there. General Kenobi, back away! The general tells his troops. The three clash as clones rain from the skies. The duel is evenly matched, but Anakin would disarm two of the general's hands. And this would take, you know... 20-30 minutes. This would be a, a long gated duel. This would be ongoing. This would, this is not a short duel. This is a continuous duel, right? And soon after, Kenobi would shoot his legs. Now, under arrest, General. We should kill him, Master. It's not the Jedi way, Anakin. What's so important about this line being used right here is that remember when Anakin killed Dooku, he used that line. That is not the Jedi way. Well, I'm reusing it here because I want to emphasize the fact that Anakin will be reminded not to fall to the dark side. He will pay for his crimes. Anakin agrees, and they continue with the siege, with General Grievous in custody. The campaign ends as the 212th and 501st 
crush enemy forces. The fleet will return to Coruscant, with General Grievous in custody and the Separatist leaders as well. With Grievous facing trial in the Republic Senate, as well as the Separatist warlords, the Jedi would be returning from various campaigns, and they would start to reconvene, and discuss removing Palpatine from power. So because of the time that Anakin and Obi-Wan were away, you're not going to have any of this Anakin going back and forth to Palpatine. Palpatine can't execute Order 66 because he doesn't want to possibly affect Anakin, who will be on the front line. So Palpatine kind of has to hold his reins here. He wouldn't have expected in the situation, much like in canon, for Anakin to be sent with Obi-Wan. They kind of just thought that Obi-Wan would be sent to go deal with Grievous and he would die. He didn't really care either way, but the point being is that he didn't really think Anakin would end up going with them. So Anakin going with Obi-Wan would derail his plans because now the Jedi Masters are returning from their various campaigns. The Jedi would start discussing Palpatine's removal of power, and that would be the emergency powers in particular. Anakin would be sent to find out Palp's motives, and Obi-Wan would boast about his Padawan to the Council. Now, Obi-Wan believes in this situation that he wouldn't have been able to beat Grievous without Anakin. So, I know boasting about Anakin is very uncharacteristic of Obi-Wan, but in this situation, I think it kind of flies. Anakin would learn that Palpatine was the Sith Lord, and he would return back to the Council. Now, before he goes to the Council, because his master is there, Anakin would tell Obi-Wan, who was also in the Jedi Temple, who would also immediately go to Mace. So, you got two masters now that have very powerful influence in the Council, uh, Obi-Wan and Mace and Windu would reconvene the council. Yoda would be made aware and he would make sure that the council didn't move on Palpatine. Yoda would be returning back to Coruscant and Anakin and Obi-Wan would travel to Palpatine for normal briefings. They would act like nothing was abnormal. So the whole idea is so that Palpatine doesn't believe that Anakin snitched on him. Palpatine's gonna be like, oh, I'm in a clear, cool. He might be thinking about this. Yoda who would be just returning from the battlefront, would return. Anakin Obi-Wan would again be sent to relieve Palpatine of his emergency powers. On the other hand, the masters of the order that were there, which would be Yoda, Mace, Kit Fisto, Plo, Sassy Tim, they would await in a gunship not far away from Palpatine's office, and they would be given a signal that would let them know if the Jedi needed help, which Obi-Wan and Anakin had the ability to turn on. The Master of Diplomacy would enter and politely introduce and ask the Chancellor about the war. Palpatine would admit that victory was near. Obi-Wan would ask that Palpatine be relieved of all emergency powers. Not that he was going to force him and not that he was under arrest, but he wanted to suggest that he remove his emergency powers because Palpatine believed was in victorious hands. Palpatine would ask Anakin what he thought of this. Anakin would say, I'm not happy, but the war is ending, as you said, Chancellor. Palpatine would say, The Jedi want more power, can't you see it? Before Anakin could speak, Obi-Wan says, No, Chancellor. We see the war is ending, and that you agree, that no longer should the Republic be controlled by one man. Now, will you renounce your power? No. Your loss for power has gone too far today. A lightsaber drops from his sleep. Master, watch out. Anakin steps in front of him and pulls out his lightsaber. Obi-Wan triggers the signal and the Jedi rush to their aid. Obi-Wan pulls his saber and Palpatine focuses on Kenobi. And Anakin sees that his master is struggling. Now, Obi-Wan was very talented in Form 3. That was his, that was like the Form 3 that was his. Like he was known as a master of Form 3. It's kind of a big deal if he's getting pushed into a corner. And that's kind of what I'm trying to show. Palpatine is really, really powerful. And I think Obi-Wan would be able to handle him for a short time, but not all a long time. Anakin would notice that Palpatine was trying to kill Obi-Wan. And before Palpatine could land the final blow, a wave of the force sends Palpatine across the room. Master Yoda and the other masters arrive, each igniting their lightsabers. Palpatine is so shocked, he doesn't realize that Anakin has walked up near him and ignited his blue lightsaber and held it. Palpatine's throat. Surrender, Chancellor. Palpatine is frustrated. Now you would dare. All that power. All you could have become. 
Hoisted to die. A Jedi. Obi-Wan lunges across the room and blocks Anakin from receiving a lightning wave that was coming out of the Chancellor's fingers. Obi-Wan's defense isn't enough, and he starts getting struck. New! Shouts Palpatine. Anakin sees his master in pain and then strikes Sidious down. General Grievous is tried and is imprisoned. As the Jedi watches every move, General Grievous is now the final Sith. Anakin eventually becomes a father and a Jedi Master, much like he had always wanted. Padme lives and the Republic uh, reforms without their Chancellor, and the Republic also finds out that he was behind the construction of the Clone Army and the Clone Wars. Grievous will remain in prison and anything could happen, he could be broken out or whatnot, or he'll just remain there until he dies. But that's it. That's my theory. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I know it's a bit shorter. I could have probably con I could have brought it out a little bit longer if I wanted to. Uh, but there was a lot of information here, and I thought it'd be interesting to have a different scenario at the end to try and show what cause and effect it could have had, especially with Anakin and Obi Wan going to Utapau to fight him. I think that was a pretty fair assumption to believe that that would happen. Um, but tell me what you think down below. Tell me what you think would have happened down below. What do you think? Do you think General Grievous would be more powerful? Or do you think that he would be very limited, much like Darth Vader? You know, I think the whole idea of General Grievous being Force sensitive is really cool. But I just, I don't really see him being able to wield Force Lightning or stuff like that. He was also made of electronics. And though his suit wasn't meant to hurt him when he was struck with electricity, I just, I don't really see him being able to use electricity all that well. He had like no fingers, he was literally just organs and a metal suit. Like that's what Grievous was. And I really don't see Grievous having any really strong force powers, other than maybe like a force push or a force choke here and there, and he would fuel out of that really passionate anger he had for the Jedi, but other than that I really don't believe the force powers would have done much for him. But tell me what you think down below. I hope you guys enjoyed this as much as I did making it though. Have a great one, I love you all, and always remember, may the Force be with you.